ओके सो वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट सो इन द लास्ट क्लास टू वी लर्न ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट रिलेटेड टू मैट्रिक्स विच इज अ रैंक ऑफ ए मैट्रिक्स एंड रैंक ऑफ ए मैट्रिक्स इज नथिंग बट द ए रैंक इज नथिंग बट द नंबर ऑफ मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ लीनियर इंडिपेंडेंट वेक्टर रो और कलम वेक्टर इन साइड ए मैट्रिक्स सो इन साइड ए मैट्रिक्स यू विल फाइंड द रो एंड कलम वेक्टर्स एज आई मैंशन इन द लास्ट क्लास एंड इफ दे आर लीनियर इंडिपेंडेंट टू ईच अदर ऑल द रो एंड कलम देन the rank of a matrix is nothing but the order of a matrix and if it is linearly dependent then it will be less than the order of a matrix you will need to calculate how this is there and with that you calculate uh, the rank of a matrix now today we will go another important thing which is called kale hamilton theorem i am not going to prove this there is a tricky proof of that but let me first state what is the theorem suggests that a square matrix satisfy a square matrix satisfies the characteristics its own characteristics equation a very simple uh, statement a square matrix satisfies its own i shouldn't put this d here a square matrix satisfied its own characteristics equation what is the meaning of that say a matrix a the eigen value equation is this date of this quantity is having a equation this equal to 0 is called the characteristics equation or the secular equation this is characteristic equation that we know i mean in the previous class we have already discussed this uh, in a elaborate way so this is the characteristics equation and now if i expand these things if i expand these things what happened i will have a polynomial of lambda i will have a polynomial of lambda a is given so it will be something like lambda to the power n lambda to the power n plus say c n minus 1 lambda to the power n minus 1 plus c n minus 2 lambda to the power n minus 2 let us put in this way plus c0 is equal to 0 i have a polynomial of order n if the matrix of order n i should have this kind of polynomial by the way this polynomial can be represented as lambda to the power i mean if i divide entire thing by cn then i will have lambda to the power n then some coefficient lambda to the power n minus 1 and so on but the thing is that this same equation will be satisfied by the matrix itself this zero should be represented by the null matrix so i i write it as z here note that z is a null matrix so first one is a equation the scalar equation but the second word is a matrix equation because a is a matrix a to the power n and all these things are there coefficient is not remains uh, is remain same c0 is there so i since is a matrix equation i need to multiply i with the same order of a and z is a null matrix of order a so it is a null matrix 
of order A, whatever be the order, it will be something like this. Okay. So, let us now check this thing, whatever the definition I put, let us check whether really it is happening or not. So, let us take one example, this is the old example we are taking, I have a matrix A. So, secular equation is 1 minus lambda i date is equal to 0. From here, I can write it is 2 minus lambda 6 0 minus 1 minus lambda is equal to 0. Then I have 2 minus lambda 1 minus 1 plus lambda is equal to 0. So, here I can have 2 or 2 into 1 it is 2, okay, let me do it explicitly. Two into one, two into lambda, two plus two lambda, minus lambda, and then minus lambda square. So lambda square, then uh, my, uh, with a negative sign, so it is with lambda, so minus lambda minus two is equal to zero. So this is my characteristics equation or secular equation, where I can get the Eigen value of lambda, but the equation of secular equation can uh, boils down to this particular form lambda square minus lambda minus 2. So, now the next thing is that <coughs> if this is uh, my equation, then uh, I can have uh, I can put just a here and check whether this is satisfying or not. So, the next thing is according to the Calais Hamilton theory, if this is my characteristics equation, then a square minus a minus 2 i, here i will be a 2 by 2 identity matrix should be equal to 0, 0, 0, 0. This, this is according to the Kelly Hamilton theory, this should satisfy. Now, we should check whether really it is satisfying or not, we can calculate very easily. So, what will be my a square? 2, 6, 0, minus 1, 2, 6, 0, minus 1, it is 2 into 2, it is 4, 2 into 6, 12, 6, so it is seems to be 6, 2 into 0, minus, so it will be 0, 0 into 6, minus into, it will be 1. I have a square this quantity, then a is there I know and 2 is and both the things are known. Now, I can write readily write these things 4, 6, 0, 1 minus a is 2, 6, 0, minus 1 minus 2 is 1, 0, 0, 1 is it given, is it uh, equal to 0? Let us check. The first thing is 4 minus 2 minus 2, 4 minus 2 minus 2. So, that means the first quantity element is 0. Second, 6 minus 6, 0, 6 minus 6 is 0 and the last one is 0. So, the weightage is 0. So, next is this is 0, this is 0, 2 multiplied by 0, so it is also 0 and the last one 1 plus 1 it is 2 minus 2 into 1 it is minus 2. So, 2 minus 2 it is 0. So, that means this equation is true because this is following the same characteristics equation. So, A is following the same characteristics equation that is why 
it is satisfying this quantity. So, Kelly Hamilton theory, I can have uh, these things in my hand that it is a very powerful thing and I, I can say that this is satisfying. Next thing is that with Kelly Hamilton theory, applying Kelly Hamilton theory, what extra we can do? What extra we can do? So, this is the equation I can have. So, we can do one, one thing. What? I can apply A inverse to the left hand side. In the right hand side, since it is 0, so I will have 0, 0, 0, 0. So, when I apply A inverse here, then it will be A inverse A A a inverse a will be 1. So, I will have a lesser order in the first multiplication, I will have a here. When I multiply this a inverse, I will have i here, because a inverse a is a identity matrix i. And then minus 2 of i, which is equal to 0 0 something, because say it is 0. Uh, I am doing one mistake 2 i it is 2 i. So, when I multiplied the a inverse it will be a inverse here. So, i multiplied by a inverse. So, it will be a inverse. So, finally, I have this equation. So, this is a very powerful equation in the sense that without doing anything I can calculate the a inverse which is some some it is not always very easy to find out a, a inverse of a matrix, but using the Kelly Hamilton theory, I can have inverse something like this, a very straightforward form for this at least for this given matrix, I will have this. So, once I have this, then if I apply, if I put the value of a and i, then readily I can have the inverse. So, let us check whether I can get it or not. So, A inverse according to the Kelly Hamilton theory is half. So, A is 2, 6, 0, minus 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 1. What I am getting here? Half 2 minus 1, it is 1. 6 minus 0, it is 6, 0 minus 0, it is 0, 1 minus 1 seems to be minus 2. So, I am getting A inverse something like this. So, I do not know whether this is a correct thing or not, we need to again cross verify by multiplying A and check that whether it is given the identity or not. So, finally, I am getting something 1 6 0 minus 2 divided by 2. So, A, A inverse is 2 6 0 minus 1 multiplied by A inverse, A inverse is it, this should I can take half outside. So, 1 6 0 minus 2 is something like this. So, if I calculate half 2 into 1 2 6 into 0, so I will have here 2, 2 into 6 12, 6 into minus 2 minus 12, so cancel out I will have 0, 0 into 1 minus 1 into 0 I will have 0, 0 into 6 minus 1 into minus 2, 2. So, 2, 2 I can take 2 outside, so these 2 will cancel out. So, finally, I will have which is this. So, that means I can find out the A inverse correctly, because when I calculate A, A inverse, I can get the identity matrix in my hand. So, with that I can say that Kelly Hamilton theory is indeed a very powerful, uh, powerful theorem through which by applying which 
you can calculate uh, uh, the inverse of a matrix very easily. If it is a 3 by 3 matrix, then it is very difficult, sometimes it is very difficult to find out the inverse by the standard method. But if you apply the Calais Hamilton theory, it seems to be simpler because you need to just multiply the matrix by itself and you can just do some simple algebra and you can get the inverse readily. So, with that we I would like to conclude this uh, this particular topic, this matrix and all these things. Now, we will go to some another important topic which is function space. So, let us go straight away. <coughs> function space. Like a vector space, now I can have a new name function space. So, it is entirely the new thing function space, but before going to the function space and all these things. So, let us try to find out uh, what is the meaning of function and all these things. So, we know that function is nothing, but some mapping. So, I have some it is called domain. it is called codomain, I call it x and I call it y. One element x is here, I apply a mapping, this is mapping, we call this mapping as f x and as a result, I am getting another quantity y, which is in codomain. So, function is nothing but mapping one from one set of elements which I call domain. So, here x belongs to x and f x which is equal to y belongs to y big Y. So, that means, I am putting some kind of mapping. So, that I can get this element and I will get uh, another element in the domain. So, this is in the codomain, this is the domain and this is the codomain. Now, there are different kind of uh, transformation. For example, this is if I say this is this mapping is real to real quantity. So, r to r. So, real number to real number mapping. So, for example, if I take uh, function as e to the power x, then this is example where the real quantity is going to real quantity. So, I can take any x here and I put the operation on the mapping such that I can find e to the power x. So, e to the power x is my rule and based on rule I can find every x I can find one y here in the codomain. It is not necessarily it will go to r to r real to real. For example, I can go like r 2 r 2. So, this is a real quantity and r 2 is uh, also a real quantity, but 2 means it is definition the uh, dimension is different. For example, f x is cos x sin x. So, I can have my x here in domain, I can operate f x and my operate operation and my rule is suggest that whatever the x I will take, I will take the cos x and sin x and put this value. This value if I put this value, so this is nothing but a vector quantity is a column vector like thing. So, I can go from one dimension to higher dimension also. So, it is not necessarily in the similar way I can go r 2 to r. How? Instead of one input, I need to put two input here. As a result, I can get say this. I will take one x, I will take one y. So, that means, two elements I am taking and as a result, what I am getting is a single element through the mapping. I can generalize uh, generalize also. So, r n to r m. I can take for example, I can take a
2 by 3 matrix I multiply this with x 1 x 2 x 3 x 1 x 2 x 3. So, that means 3 of order 3, 3 value I am taking and as a result I am getting something here which is y 1 y 2 y 1 and y 2 there will be no y 3 because 2 in 2 into 3 and 3 into 1 when I multiply that I will get 2 into 1 that means I start r 3 and I return I go to r 2. So, from r 3 to r 2. So, you can you can change the dimension and you can transform or map the thing in this way. So, you are getting something. So, the the point is that function is something which is nothing but a rule or mapping. This rule and mapping allow us to put this value from here to here through this function or through this rule f x. Okay. So, this is a very 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 basic thing of functions. Now, I will go back to this function space. What is the meaning of function space? So, first of all it is a it is a set of functions. is a set of functions. I have a set of functions and in the space in the function space in the space each point corresponds to a function. So, what is the meaning that first of all I have a set of functions I do not know what is the number of functions it may be infinity. So, I have a set of function and I can define a space where all the all the point in the space corresponds to each functions one functions is represented by the point in that space we call this a function space. So, if this is the case then we should have some kind of examples which are important. For example, in the all C A B, this is the set of all continuous function, set of continuous set of all continuous function in the closed interval. a b. So, all the function you can imagine different kind of function in 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 fact infinite number of functions can be possible. So, if they are continuous in nature they can fall on this set and a and b for example, if I write this is say my a this is my b. So, if this is a function whatever the function may be this is continuous in a and b. So, this particular function f belongs to this continuous function and they form a function space. Another functions g this is also continuous they can also form a function this this there is a this both are f and g both belongs to c in the closed interval a b because they are continuous. If there is a discontinuity like this this function h is not a function of this continuous space or continuous uh, uh, the space of continuous functions. So, there are many functions infinite number of functions which are continuous in a b interval and all these function which are continuous in a b interval are in the in the in the set of this function continuous set of continuous function in a b and they form a function space. Also, there are different other kind of functions which are important in different cases. For example, say L 1 type function 
L1 function. What is L1 function? By definition, it is something that this function suggests whatever the function that is belong to L, if I do in the close interval, if I do this calculation, if I take this value, this integration, this integration should be finite. So, I will have a function f x, I take a mod of this function, then I integrate over a to b and if this set is this whatever the value I have, if it is finite, then I can set that this L 1 fun this, this particular function fall to L 1 type of function. This integration is called L 1 integration. In the similar way, I can have L 2 function. Here the rule is in the interval a and b, the square of this function should be finite. I take the mod of this function, make a square of that in a and b, if this function in a and b, if this function, if I integrate and if this function is finite, then this kind of functions belongs to L 2 functions. So, it is called L 2 integrable or square integrable. Square integrable functions. This square integrable function has a huge implication in quantum mechanics. You should always correlate these things to quantum mechanics because in quantum mechanics we know that the psi function mod of psi minus infinity to infinity say d x in 1 d this quantity gives us the total probability. If this is normalized then this value has to be 1 which is less than infinity or finite if the normalized quantity is not there, I need to put a value n here. Again, this n should be less than equal to less than infinity. That means, it is it is a finite quantity. So, in quantum mechanics, you remember that in the interval, this psi function should be continuous, which is here in already discussed. And not only that, the mod of this square d x, if I do this calculation, which gives the probability, then that value should be equal to something which is finite. So, this is directly the consequence of whatever the L 2 function by definition is mean. So, whatever the wave function you are taking is, is followed by this L 2 L 2 functions the set of L 2 functions. Okay. With this uh, very brief with this very very brief uh, notation and very brief a discussion with this function and all, all the different kind of uh, thing related to L 1, L 2 and uh, continuous function. I would like to conclude here. In the next class, we will start a more important thing related to function and we need to find out uh, this function, how this function space are formed that is one. Second thing, how different kind of functions are behave like a vector because this is a, this is like a vector space. So, in the vector space I find linearly dependent independent vector that is the first thing we find in the vector space. In function space would it be possible to find out linearly independent dependent functions we will check that, but before that we will do something called matrix space. So, matrix is an important concept that uh, I would like to introduce you. Uh, you should know that this kind of things are called matrix because in, in uh, higher studies when you go to the tensor analysis and all these things gravitation this matrix concept of matrix may be important. So, very briefly I will try to describe these things, but mainly I would like to concentrate on this different kind of linearly independent or linearly dependent function how you calculate that, how you find whether the linear the functions are set of function are linearly dependent or independent etcetera. So, with that let me conclude this class. So, see you in the next, next class where we start with the matrix space. Okay, thank you.